everybody, we're the Scots. We traded the typical American dream to follow a dream of our very own. We live in our RV and travel full time, and today you can spot us on, on the, the road. road. <laughs> That's how I drive. It's, it's one of our favorite places to be is on the road. It really is. Uh, no matter where we're going, we enjoy the journey to get there. We do. And you know, this is a little, this, this video is a little special. It is. And why is it special? It's the very first video from the truck. The our new, new truck. Our new truck that I don't have a name doesn't have a name. <laughs> I was like, uh, what should I call it? <laughs> from White Lightning. Oh, I kind of like that one. No, wait, I don't. No, you don't. Because that's a total grease thing. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like grease. Never we mind. still don't have a name for this truck, nope. but I will say we are extremely happy with it. Yes. Ryan's happy with it for all the manly reasons, like the... Bigger tires and the flatbed and the 90 gallon reserve tank and airbags and the 6.7 liter turbo power stroke diesel engine you know things like that. Well not just that but just actually driving it and how it feels. It really does pull our trailer absolutely wonderfully. It is so much <laughs> quieter in here so you can quieter. probably hear our videos a lot better than you used to from in here. You probably hear me mouth breathing. <laughs> it's so quiet in fact the other day it was making a noise because we got a little water flooded under it when we accidentally went off-roading. That was fun. Um, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> and it was really noisy and we were sitting here like, whoa, what's this? Because it's usually so quiet. Sometimes I can't even hear the engine. So, love that. Um, the dog is set up really well back there. We got this nice little divider to keep her from jumping up front. Um, the dog's happy back there. Sorry, very bouncy. Um, we're happy up here. It's very comfortable, and I mean, I guess this isn't just my reasons, it's his too, but it's just so convenient. All the cubbies we have, places to put things, all the cup holders. Um, I've got an actual outlet for using my laptop, which I do all the time. I have a cooled seat. And I have a heated seat. <laughs> that way I don't get the swamp butt. We're just absolutely loving this truck, but it still doesn't have a name, so that's something that we're still working on. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we are on our way back home, if, if you can still say that we have a home. We are Colorado bound. You know, we are domiciled in Colorado and all of our family is there, so we still think of it as home, even though our home is back there. Right behind us. <laughs> um, but we are not just heading back for a week or two, we are actually heading back to Colorado for about three and a half months, yep. or potentially more. We have to be static. We have to be stationary, which is not something we're super excited about, and that's one of the things we wanted to talk about because um, there are a lot of RVers out there that are stationary. They live in their RV, but they stay places a very long time, six months, a year, or possibly even permanent. There is nothing wrong with that. It's just that it's not what we got into it for. Yeah. We have itchy feet, and we really like to keep moving. And plus, if you've watched all of our videos, as I know some of you have, you know that we feel like we're on a little bit of a time limit due to health concerns and we really want to see everything that we can in the next five to ten years just in case that's kind of all I'm going to be able to do. Yeah. So um, we want to move more often and we really don't want to be staying any place for three months, even home. However, we have a lot of life things going on. It's a place called the real world. That will require us to do so. Now, some of it is quite positive. For example, we're going to be working on beginning our surrogacy and trying to make some babies happen. Um, hopefully twins this year, which would be awesome. So that's one big process. Twins. Brian's starting to go <laughs> to his VA appointments and get all set up with all the medical and other types of care that he needs there. Um, because he's apparently an old man falling apart like me with arthritis. You're an old man? No, but I am old and falling apart. Oh, well that's good. So, you know, we have all that kind of stuff. Doctor's appointments, accountants, doing taxes. Um, our cabin that is our main source of income is up in Estes Park, Colorado, and we are actually going to be spending a good week and a half there this time and doing a lot of maintenance. We have a, a list a mile long of stuff that needs to be done there. Yeah, we do. On top of all of that, we have um, storage units. Most of it is my dad's stuff. But from there's when so he much of it. 
<laughs> but there's so much, and then there is more of ours than I'd like to admit, just because yeah. we keep having to put stuff in there to deal with it later. Well, it's later. <laughs> it's later. <laughs> it's time. So we are paying for two storage units, and we'd really like to get that down to one, preferably the smaller one, yes. if possible. It's so a um, there will be a certain amount of stuff that will probably require that we keep a storage unit long term because. My dad was sort of the keeper of everything in our family. He has all the family photos and memories and videos and everything else because there's really nobody else left. So that's now in my possession. It's not something I'm going to ever carry with us, but it needs to be kept. <laughs> so we'll probably have a storage unit. We would just like it to be small and manageable yes. and have it be mostly my dad's stuff and not too much of our own except for maybe Christmas items that we just pull out when we're in Colorado for Christmas. Um, and then those few, like, five or six boxes we had of sentimental stuff. Everything else we really need to force ourselves to go through. Yep. So, on top of all of that, we want to keep up on our health and trying to do more hiking and more walking and more yoga and eating cleaner and doing better because we got, you know, we haven't gotten rid of very much fluff yet. There's a lot more fluff to get rid of here. Um, I'm the perfect amount of fluffy. <laughs> Let's see what else. We have school that we're still working on, our yep. travel schooling. Yep. Um, you know, and I think one of the really important things, too, is is that even though we're going to be at home and we're going to be stationary, we want to travel Yeah. around the area. We want to go see things that we've never seen before. You know, I've lived there 10 years. You've lived there about three. About three, yeah. But there's so much we haven't done, even within a two-hour radius. So yeah. that's what we're going to focus on is hiking in new places. State parks. Exploring new places like state parks and towns we haven't been to. Um, and it's basically a double-edged benefit because we will keep things fresh for ourselves and not be as bored with staying in one place. And we'll still be able to bring cool videos to the channel and show you guys new stuff. We won't just be going and doing the same things all the time. Now remember that, guys. We're here for you. <laughs> so we're very excited about that and we also want to show because there are people out there who do have to be stationary for long periods of time we want to kind of inspire them too like hey you can still explore even if you can't travel so exactly. we're going to be trying to do a pretty good focus on on all of that um, as well as spend time with our friends and family that are there um, we get to stay close to brian's parents so we're going to try to spend quite a bit of time with them and we're going to be close to my aunt and grandma, and my grandma is still recovering from her brain injury, so um, she really enjoys having company, and I'm sure she's going to want to see me a couple times a week. She's quite the socialite. And my best friend um, has actually come out to Colorado. It's really bumpy, so I'm trying to hold this. Um, and she is my grandma's caregiver right now. So that works out well for me because I can also see my best friend who normally is very far away. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. And then our wonderful friends Greg and Laura recently had their first baby. Congratulations guys. So we're really excited to spend some time with them and the little one. And I'm going to try to keep Brian from stealing the baby, which is always difficult because he wants to steal pretty much all babies. Watch your babies. Keep your babies away from Brian. He'll take them home. Puppies too. Real incognito, baby. Well, I hate. I figure if I call you out, it might prevent it. it. Might prevent a crime. I like babies and puppies. So that's pretty much what we're up to. We're taking three days to drive home. Um, three shorter days, four hours on the road each day, which really ends up being six. Yep. Um, today is Super Bowl Sunday. What? What? Go Broncos! Although I'm sure you guys will see this video like. Three weeks from now or something. <laughs> so by then we'll know the outcome. But we are rooting for the Broncos. He has a Bronco shirt on under there. I swear. I do. I do. And so we're really excited. I hope we win this year. Come on, Broncos. Let's do this. <laughs> Don't buckle under the pressure this time. Um, and one last little story to share with you. Um, you by now you have seen our video from Tuzigoot National Monument. Uh, who is this? And is this what we do now? Well, in a second. But but first. A little souvenir we picked up from Tuzigoot. Tuzigoot. Cactus candy. And the whole reason we made this video is because I wanted to show it before we ate it and we really want to eat it. So, we're going to try that while we... Jesus. Sorry. So bouncy. 
while we uh, make this video. I'm gonna hold this for yes, you. Yes, please. Thank you. Right. So I can open the I cactus. I can film and drive. And so later that day, after we made our pilgrimage to Scottsdale and ate at Portillo's again, we decided to check out another national monument. Why do we have to talk about this right now? Agua Fria National Monument. Yeah, so we decided to go see Agua Fria National Monument. Um, if you guys know anything about us, you know that we love to get the passport stamps for our uh, National Parks passport. Sorry, I picked this one because it's my favorite color. Beauty Berry Purple. I picked it because it looked good. Is it good? Ooh, that's really good. Oh, yeah. Okay, we like cactus candy. Definitely a fan. So yeah, we thought we'd go see this monument. Didn't do any research, just looked it up on the GPS and went. Oh, I was the nerd who said, oh, let's not look it up because I don't want to read all about it before we get there. I want to get there and read all the little stuff in the museum or whatever, like we did at Tuzigu. Real smooth. So the GPS said that it was 23 miles off the highway and that it would take an hour and a half and that made no sense to me. I thought it had to be wrong because the GPS has been wrong a lot. Mm. <laughs> it did take an hour and a half to get to where the GPS was taking us because it was like a complete four-wheel drive road. Yes. It was so slow going. We were going like two the entire yeah. time. And yeah, we're on rocky desert dirt roads through desert pastures and driving past cows. Um, oh, Lucy loved that though. She she likes to bark at all the cows. And we we get to where the GPS was taking us, and we were literally in the middle of nowhere. I had to pee so bad. You got to feel me on this. When you got to pee and you're on a four wheel drive road for an hour and a half, oh my god! I was like, let's just get to this visitor center so I can pee. There's no visitor center. Nothing. But we had surprisingly good signal at the top of this hill to nowhere, so we looked it up. Agua Fria National Monument is just a land area. There is no visitor center. There's nothing to see in particular. It's just a place to hike and camp and four-wheel. <laughs> Embarrassing. That was fun. <laughs> then it took us another hour and a half to get back down to the highway. Yep. And it was like 8 o'clock at night by then. I mean, it was just... It was bad. Tom so, Foolery. Now, there are other designations, like national land areas and recreation areas, so I have no idea why it's considered a national monument and why we were misled in such a fashion. But we definitely learned our lesson to make sure... Do your research. ...that we're going to something. But it's a great area for us to earmark for the future because there's all kinds of boondock camping yep. and um, hiking and four-wheeling roads and... Yeah, it's great for that purpose. That's it's a really cool place. Totally not the purpose that we were there for. <laughs> not at all. So we're going to lick our wounds and eat our pretty purple cactus candy and just keep enjoying our drive today. Go Broncos! Go Broncos! Omaha! Omaha! You know what I'm talking about. Bye, guys. <laughs>